we used to joke around and call them people weed heads and you know other people call them stoners but those are people who are having a cannabis use disorder right. it's affecting their ability to live a functional life We have another episode of Healthy Exchanges with Dr. G. And I'm, of course, Dr. G. This is the podcast where we show you what's going on in our community and help you make better informed and um, better decisions about your health care by showing you what services and the great people we have in our community that pour into us and help us make better decisions here at Florida Concierge Medicine and Wellness for our community. Today we have a great topic with, a, with an expert in its field. Um, the topic for today is medical marijuana and how, you know, how it affects um, health and health decisions and the way it's the evolution of health medical marijuana in South Florida and in the country uh, and beyond South Florida. And the expert that we brought on today is a good friend of mine, um, <laughs> extremely intelligent um, and has a, a breadth of knowledge from uh, as an athlete all the way up to an MD. Um, and I'd like to bring him on just to let you know exactly what medical marijuana can do for you if you were to need it. His name is Herve Damas. Herve? What's up, Doc? I'm happy to be here, brother. Yeah, that's a big, mighty big invite, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Introduction right there. So I ain't gonna let you down. I got you covered. Absolutely, you know? so, absolutely. So brother, tell, tell the people what, who you are why you do what you do, and what is it that you do? All right, cool. So, Hervé Damas, MD, um, physician, trained general surgery, radiology, left allopathic medicine, like the hospital system, actually during residency, um, when I first started this cannabis journey. So, I got into it because of personal reasons. Like you mentioned, I played football, really bad injury, um, ACL, MCL, PCL tear. I also had a whole bunch of undiagnosed concussions, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, we didn't become aware of the prevalence and the long-term effects of those concussions until recently, really the last decade or so. So, you know, when those things started piling up on me, uh, I had access, fortunately, to a, to a lot of physicians like, you know, you have colleagues, you're kind of hitting them up, like something's wrong, I don't know what it is. Like besides the surgeries, I had other surgeries after that, but it was like something's wrong, right? right. And it takes a lot, I think, you know, for me as a person, I know as a man uh, in society in the way we've been taught to handle uh, adversity and difficulty, you kind of internalize it and kind of push through it as much as you can. But you know it's bad when it's like you, it gets to a point where you're like, yo, I cannot do this no more. Something is wrong. So I went out um, seeking help. And before you know it, I was like, besides going through a battery of tests, I was a whole bunch of prescriptions. It was, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, it was crazy. I, I would be honest and say it wasn't because of malevolence from the physicians. It was like, this is what we do. This mm -hmm. is what we know, right? So it's like, bro, you got problems sleeping? Here you go. Here's some Ambien. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got anxiety now? All right, here we go. You know, here's some Xanax. No lie, right? Mm -hmm. So post-surgical, here's some perks. Here's some oxys. So it was like, and then like, oh, you're not feeling right? Here's a circle. No lie. So right. it was like, and up until about a year ago, I still had a bunch of those pills in mm -hmm. my medicine guy <laughs> because I had stopped taking them. Because they didn't work, they were so so. Some of them didn't work, but some of them were like, they worked, but it was so bad that it was like I'd rather like I. It was this is worse than what it was before. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really a personal experience for me, like trying to help myself deal with things I was dealing with. I had no idea what was going on. There was a lack of education, understanding. And then somebody was like, "Yo, you know, people have been smoking weed, and they say it helps." Right. I'll try. <laughs> yeah. At well, this point, you know what? I will tell point. you the truth. I was like, nah, that's crazy talk. Real talk. I was like, that's crazy talk because I'm a physician. I mean, this was, I was in medical school. I was like, yo, bro, I'm studying medicine. Mm. If that worked, they would have told me. Right, right, right. <laughs> we would know this stuff. I haven't heard this in class. Yeah, I have, I have not heard this in class, right? Mm -hmm. So all you wee heads are talking all this stuff. And plus, you know, being an athlete and actually being, you know, going really deep in these institutions, prohibition played a big part in those policies. So, 
you know, no smoking weed, you get a lot of trouble with smoking weed. And then, you know, even med school in the hospitals for rotations and stuff, like, you can't smoke weed. Mm -hmm. you can't. So I was like, I'm not messing with that. It, it hasn't been proven. Mm -hmm. I'm not being taught this in school. And then there's trouble. I ain't doing it. So it really, honestly, I had hit a wall at one point, man. I was, like, sleep deprived, sleeping, like, three hours a week. Right. I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly when it was, right before I took step two CS. Uh -huh. This is how I remember. I had not slept more than three hours in about two and a half months. And I failed step two CS, uh -huh. which is just like, you know, yeah. it's like a, a test of like English language, basically. But I went in there and I was like, you know, it only takes a couple of days of sleep deprivation for you to have like a 20 to 40 percent cognitive uh, impairment decline. Uh -huh. Right. So it's like you're drunk. So you're walking around drunk. I had like two and a half months of this. Mm. I walked through that thing. I was like, what is going on here? Even the actors were like, hey, lymphoma. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Because I was like, what? And so I remember it was then I was like, yo, that's crazy. How could I, like, this is the, easy, this is the easiest test that you can take in medicine. Something is wrong here, mm -hmm. right? For me, like for my brain to be so screwed up. And so that's when I started looking for a bunch of help, and then eventually that stuff didn't work, and I threw up my hands like, you know what? What can I lose? I might as well smoke this weed. Mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. I already failed in exam. Right. Like, this is crazy, right. right? And it worked. That was the craziest part, is that I went to sleep. That was like the number one thing. I couldn't sleep. And so I smoked some weed. Actually, I coughed more than I smoked because mm -hmm. I wasn't a smoker. Still aren't. And I went to sleep. And I still didn't believe it. I still right. was like, nah, this is a coincidence. Like, there's no way. Because I had really, I'd been taking Benadryl. I had taken Benadryl for sleep. So I had the Ambien prescription. I had taken some other over-the-counter stuff, um, like the Tylenol PM. I had even started drinking to go to sleep. Like, go home. Like, I need, something's got to shut my brain off. Like, right. there's got to be something. I had uh, taken the Xanax. So I'd taken a larger dose and it was given to me for the daytime anxiety. It was just like, hey, you want to go sleep? Double that dose. So I was trying all that stuff. Some of that stuff worked, but left me as a zombie in the daytime. So that was worse. And I was like, I can't believe I just went like all of this time. All I had to do was smoke, right, right, <laughs> smoke right, this, right. right? And so that was like the thing that got me going. And then, uh, you know, when I came down here for my radiology residency, um, we had passed a law in 2016 that allowed us, because I'm an older medical student, obviously, you know, I had careers before this. Um, so we passed the law, but the, the residency program, again, there's no smoking, right? Mm -hmm. So again, like I'm going, I'm like, I'm going downhill mm -hmm. again, right? And I'm in the reading room looking at studies and I'm like, man, I'm not sleeping, right? So I'm completely off my game. And they passed the law, and I was like, I always said, if this happened, I would get involved because of what it's done for me personally. Yeah. And the lack of knowledge in the space, again, just looking at my personal experience was like, yo, everything else I tried did not work. This was the thing, and I'm, not, I'm a non-believer. So it's not like I was a weed smoker mm -hmm. or a weed head that I'm trying to convince you something that I've always been part of. I was like a skeptic. Big time skeptic. So I was like, man, there's got to be millions of people like me out there without the access to education, information like that I had. So I can only imagine what they're going through. And then, so when I started my practice, it was like my side gig in residency. Mm. And they found out and they were like, mm. cut the crap. Yeah. <laughs> we cannot have a doctor in our hospital, you know, doing this marijuana stuff on the side and I was like, yo, this is my own practice. And they were like, nah, it's not a good look for the hospital. We went back and forth for a bunch of months, like, you know, lawyers, like this was crazy. President of the hospital, this is Mount Sinai, mm. Miami Beach. Yeah, so the president was involved, program directors, they were like- That's crazy. Yo, it was nuts, now that I think about it. And they kept on saying, what do you, like, cut this weed crap out. Like, bro, you're a radiologist, like, you're set. You're good. Like, stop messing around, you know. I remember even my program director, swear to God, he was like, you know how many people are waiting, <laughs> like, wish they could have your job, mm. and you messing around with this weed stuff? And I was like, 
I don't know what to tell you, but like in my, I know I got to do this. Um, so eventually I resigned. <laughs> I resigned. It was like, you got to choose one. And uh, I was sitting with my program director and he's like, yo, what are you going to do? You're going to start all over at your age? I swear to God, he said that to me. He was like, what? You know what I'm saying? I was like in my early 40s at the time. He's like, you'll start over at your age? Like, you made it, homeboy. Mm -hmm. Chill out with the weed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get back in the reading room, right? And finish, like, don't worry about nothing. And I, I remember saying to him, like, I got to do this, man. Like, yeah, I know it's crazy, but if I'm going to bet on somebody, I'm going to bet on myself. Like, I, like, yep. I got to do this. And that was it. And ever since then, it's, it's been a wild ride. I've really enjoyed it, um, fulfilled me. I'm so glad that at, the, at the, the point in my life where I had to make that decision, that I made the decision I stood, you know, with my convictions. I'm happy to be able to provide people the service that I do um, in the way that I provide it, which is understanding that this is not a like silver bullet, a magic pill. There's still dangers, there's precautions. There's a whole lot of other stuff mm -hmm. that's involved. It's not like, yeah, grab some weed and start smoking it and, and everything, everything goes better, better, right? right? Um, <clears throat> I've had some incredible experiences, like end of life experiences with people. Like these are serious things. Like I've had that experience with my mom, which is why I became a physician. So a pediatric with epilepsy, you know, to really like we were talking about a breast cancer patient mm -hmm. to end of life care, that kind of stuff. So everything in between, like I've consulted with you on patients who right. like crazy presentations and I'm like, bro, what is mm -hmm. <laughs> like, help me make sense of this stuff. So the medicine has been great. I like that part because it's kept me sharp. And this is something I didn't like about radiology was that you didn't get you know, an opportunity to practice a lot of medicine because you were more of a data interpreter and provider, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and here I am, man, loving that's it. That's beautiful, man. That's great. I mean, that's that's a heck of, hell of a story to yeah, think that, man. you know, like you said, like radiology is top of the food chain, you know? <laughs> yeah. you, know you get into a radiology program, <laughs> you start thinking about the cars you're going to buy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, all that. and to think that you're going to put, you put that to the side for something that you really believe in, yeah. that makes it even that much more, you know, like, I respect that decision even more, knowing that yeah. that's the path that you had. I mean, I think that, that that's that's a noble that's a noble decision. Uh, I appreciate it. It wasn't easy. I'm not gonna sit oh, here and act like it was easy because you know I, just, I had to do the math on it. <laughs> yeah. The math, <laughs> the, math <laughs> the, the math on there is like yeah, the, yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? But um I, you know, a lot of my intendings too, I swear to God, like they were unhappy. You yeah. know, there was a lot of pressure in there. There was, um, you know, pressure to uh, perform at a certain level. So the list, we call it, or the queue, you know, which is like all the studies that need to be read for whatever section you're on, whether it's, you know, brain or chest, abdomen, whatever, MSK, you know, there's a lot of studies that need to be done. Mm -hmm. And there's like, you need to bang those out. You know, and if you're reading slow, they will talk like, yo, mm -hmm. let me talk to you about your output. Mm -hmm. And they 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 um they designate your output with these things called RVUs, mm -hmm. um you know for people who don't know so it's like the the economic value of your production mm -hmm. right as a radiologist big thing so it's like the more studies you read, right the higher your RVU the mm -hmm. only way you're gonna read more studies is to speed it up mm -hmm. right and then so it, what was crazy is that I was there looking at these dudes like yo you got all the money. Like, you're literally here, you're not on call, you're not doing crazy stuff, right? And they're like, yeah, this sucks. <laughs> exactly. And they would be there exactly. like, this blows, because all they want me to do is blast through these studies and keep going. So you're really on a treadmill. You're on a hamster wheel. Even in radiology, which everybody thinks is super cushy, you know, it wasn't. So there's always a, sa in retrospect, there's a sacrifice, there's pros and minuses. And I think um, when you have the money, Right after everything, you have the money, you have the house, you have everything. Right then, what? Right. <laughs> you know what you're saying right. like, all right, cool. Now all of that stuff is, but you still got to get up every day and do this thing that you're not interested. Yeah, if in it doing. doesn't fulfill you, it doesn't make you happy. Right. So, Speaking of happiness, man, um, what what do you think about the use of medical marijuana in that space for depression, 
um, yeah. for because that's one of the main one of the main complaints. I mean, obviously we have pain. I have mm -hmm. a lot of people come in here for, with pain. A lot of people have come in here with sleep problems. But I would say in the top three also is depression. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about using medical marijuana for depression symptoms? It is actually so. You mentioned the top three that we get. We get a lot of people for pain. Um, so if you look at the data that's provided by MSC Research and other sources, the number one population demographic that comes in for medical marijuana, middle-aged men complaining of chronic pain, right? So those are the same people who get marketed icy hot, the, uh, the back braces, like the copper back braces, you see like, bell, you know, the mm -hmm. Skechers sneakers because your feet are hurt. Like all that, if you ever watch like a game and I'll do it and I pay attention to that stuff mm -hmm. because I'm in the industry and I've read it, but you'll, if you ever pay attention to how much pain relief is being marketed, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's the, the primary def demographic. And secondary demographic is women, slightly younger, um, so early 30s, and they're suffering from chronic ailments and uh, mental health issues, anxiety, depression, mood issues, mm -hmm. right? And then the third uh, major group is sleep. So sleep disorder, somewhere between... Um, 20 to 50% of the population suffers from some sort of sleep disturbance at some at one point in, in the US. Like, so if you took a snapshot of the US, like there's a lot of people that can't sleep for whatever reason, insomnia, sleep apnea, pain that keeps them up at night, you know, anxiety, PTSD, mm -hmm. so all these things. And so when we get people that come in and they're like, you know, the accumulation of things that go on in our lives can affect mental health, right? So it's not just the anxiety, financial stuff, making decisions like, hey, yo, bro, you gonna keep the golden egg or you gonna go off on right. this wild mission, weed man? Right, like, right, you know right. Or are you gonna sit over there and take that money and shut up, right? So um, you, I get people when they come in and say, well, you know, I'm seeing a psychiatrist, so I'm seeing somebody, and this is what I'm being prescribed. The people that come to my office having the same experiences I had, right? So I was given the Seroquel when I was going through my stuff. I was like, what is going on? I can't sleep. I'm nervous. I can't remember. This is crazy. What, you know, and my body's hurting me. Like, this is nuts. And I'm looking for solutions. And so I empathize with them because I know what it's like to be kind of lost in the sauce like that, right? And you're looking for something. And what they'll complain about is that, A, either the treatment that they're getting isn't giving them sufficient results, right? So it's like, yeah, I'm on these pills, I don't feel any different. Or B, I'm on these pills, I feel worse than right. I did before, right? Yeah. And so it's like, you know, I'm looking for a solution that doesn't involve these things. So, so I will get, I would say the majority of our patients are people who have been down the traditional pathway and have been like, there's got to be something, this is not working for me. We do get a segment of people who are kind of like, I'm not into it all at all, right? We talked about that, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm all holistic, natural. I ain't messing with it at all. So can you could give me that? And my approach to it always is, this is I'm not gonna treat you like I'm gonna like, or your other doctors treat you, which is like, here's your pill, right? We're gonna talk about a lot of things: your diet, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like really important. Your exercising habits, really, really important. Your lifestyle. Right. So you have balance, work life balance. Mm -hmm. You know, are you setting proper goals for yourselves and objectives of you? Are you having leisure? Like this is all really important because the weed is not going to cure it. No, I, it's it's not not, nothing is going to cure this stuff. Right. So you're coming to me for a solution outside of the pills. And if I gave you weed, but treated it the same way that the pills, there's no difference. Right. Mm -hmm. I just replaced one with the other. But it's still the same thing. The underlying root cause is the problem. So that's why I, we talk about patients. I will send patients to like, right. listen, bro, your problem, yeah, you may be depressed, but you got to, have you had a checkup? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Are you, how you know you're not anemic? Yeah. How you know you don't have hypothyroid? Like, right. I, like, how do you know that what you're feeling is not because of a medically diagnosable issue that and you treatable. have? <laughs> yeah, treatable, yeah. right? So you come at me looking for weed, you're looking for like the final solution. We haven't mm -hmm. even done the basics yet, mm -hmm. right? So we do get a lot of people that do that. So we do this kind of holistic approach and, you know, talk about medicine and it kind of jives. I think this is why you and I get along so well is the rapport, the understanding that the patients need a little bit more time 
to get stuff off their chest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like, yo, bro, I've been waiting to say this and yeah. have somebody right. listen to me, right? Right. So, right? So sometimes you're just sitting there listening. And it just comes out of them. Yeah, right? Yeah. And it's so cathartic. Even that is healing. Um, and, I, and I look at it that way, right? So when we look at the weed, getting to the like nuts and bolts of it, the THC, you know, it affects your cognition based on the amount of it that you take. But it could be like a mood booster, a short term, right? So mm -hmm. people smoke, get high, or take an edible. You're high, you're happy, you're kind of like, ah, right? So, you know, sometimes you can use that in the morning, a small amount, like a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Get you going, right? Uh, right? And then the CBD affects you in a different way. It doesn't do that. And those are the major cannabinoids. The CBD doesn't work that way. So you're not going to take CBD and you're like, oh, man, I'm super happy. I'm high. I want to laugh. I want to dance. No. The CBD works kind of like an SSRI works, where SSRI breaks down the recycling, you know, apparatus uh -huh. of the serotonin reuptake system, right? So it kind of keeps that serotonin hanging around in the uh -huh. uh, synapses for longer, right? So we have these things called cannabinoids in our body, right? And so anybody watching familiar with the term cannabis, that's the root term. So our body actually makes these molecules Absolutely. that you also find in the plants. And the stuff that you get from the plants will either mimic what our body does, so the THC will mimic a cannabinoid called anandamide, which is called the bliss molecule. So when you do things that make you feel really good, like you eat a good meal, you see somebody you like, you hug your kids, um, orgasm, exercise, a lot of this stuff is released by your body. And downstream, it causes a release of serotonin, releases of dopamine, it causes... Uh, catecholamine release, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, these cannabinoids do all this stuff. You smoke or you consume THC, it mimics that, but in higher. So imagine the feeling of happiness that you get when you, you like hug your kids and you're happy to see, but 20 times, mm -hmm. that's the high, right? Or a runner's high. You go out and you're running 25, 30 minutes and you hit a point where your body, you're like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? That's the high, but that's a natural thing. The cannabis is natural, but it mimics that and get, allows you to have that experience at a much higher level. Pardon the pun. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whereas the CBD doesn't do that. It works, like I said, like an SSRI, and it, and, it, and it inhibits the breakdown of your own cannabinoids. So there are enzymes that break down your cannabinoid release. So when you exercise, or when you eat food, or when you're out in the sun getting vitamin D, right, and your body releases these cannabinoids, your body also wants to recycle them. The CBD will slow down that process, so over time, you, you have, have more, you have more, mm -hmm. so you have this natural kind of mood lifter, but it's based upon what your body's doing. Mm -hmm. So you have to exercise, you have to kind of go do these healthy things, you have to do these things where you're naturally enhancing your 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 own release of cannabinoids and, and serotonin and the CBD just is like, okay, good. Now this is gonna stay here for a little longer mm -hmm. and you'll be happier. And we've had really good success with that. That's really, a really great good success, explanation. Man. That's a great explanation. Because a lot of people just go out there and just go, well, I'm gonna pick up the CBD. I'm gonna take, ah, I didn't do nothing for me. <laughs> yeah, Well, exactly. you didn't do the work that yeah. is required for the CBD to do its job. Yeah. So. That's a great. That's a great analogy for a, well, an explanation of how the, the yeah. two different uh, substances will work in the body. So, uh, I actually didn't know any of this stuff. <laughs> you know? I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like because you know, we don't get taught this stuff in school. Zero, Zero absolutely. So I knew nothing. Like when I first started, I had one of my good friends from high school, which is like a blessing as well. You know, he had some health issues, and he had he he was an organic chemist, worked for Johnson and Johnson. Um, so like a big brain, you mm -hmm. know, and had a um, really serious health condition and started managing it with cannabis. And even then I was like, I don't know, bro. Mm. You just smoke it out. You, know yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> That's how much of a skeptic. Yeah. Like this dude had a master's in organic chemistry from Rutgers and was like, you know, working for, he was a lab director, like one of the like high lab directors for like Johnson and Johnson, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, I'm treating my condition with weed. And mm -hmm. I was like, 
are you really? Yeah. <laughs> right? So he had gone out to Colorado and got uh, involved in the industry out there, right? Because they were one of the earlier adopters. So that he was like, I uh, he was like my Yoda. He was like, mm -hmm. so I used to call him up and be like, Yo, what is this stuff? And he would like, you know, fill in the gaps in my knowledge early mm -hmm. on because I was just like, all I know is I smoke this mm -hmm. and I'm sleeping, right? Yeah. And in the morning, I swear to God, the anxiety was weird too. You know, as you know, like we've been in high stress situations, a physician, like you're studying, you got exams and things, you're getting pimped on rounds, you got procedures, like you got to be ready to go. You can't be all nervous mm -hmm. in this profession, right? So feeling nervous in a room full of people or walking into a building and like, oh, you know, that really bothered me. Like, what am I so, like, mm -hmm. what are you so nervous about, homeboy? Like, what is this feeling? So the anxiety went away. And that used to bother me a lot. Like, man, I don't feel confident in myself. Like, I don't feel sure. But I'm nervous about something. I don't even know why I'm nervous. Right. And I can't get rid of that feeling. So that was a like that was a big plus for that. And again, that's a major uh, attribute of CBD. Um, so as you as you can tell, I'm really big on the CBD mm -hmm. side of things. And less, you know, I appreciate the THC does a lot of great things. Um, but I think the 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 effect of prohibition has limited our scope of understanding. We haven't been able to do research. And mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, because of the prohibition, everything went underground. It's like moonshine, right? So the weed that we've been getting is kind of like the strongest, kind of mo most mm -hmm. potent stuff. Why? Because it's weed dealers that are selling it. And if you're growing this stuff illegally for consumption, you want to make the most money. Right. And how you make the most money, you need to get customers willing to get it. How you going? You got to give them something to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. Get you high. Mm -hmm. So... You know, the weed had been getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. The old time weed was closer to CBD, like very low potency THC, uh -huh. very like 1%, 2%. Nobody was getting super stoned and that kind of stuff. Um, it's recently that you have like this really potent, heavy duty stuff. And it's because of the economics of it. Uh -huh. But if you go back into the medicinal part of it, right, the weed wasn't that strong. It just... Because you didn't really need it, right? Because right. like, it was a free thing, right? Why do I need something that's so potent and so harsh when I can get the benefits from yeah. what I got right here? So, and it's it, like it keeps you clear, clear minded throughout the day. There's still, everybody thinks like weed is like uh, harmless. There's still an 8 to 10% chance of substance use disorder with, with weed. So yeah, it's not gonna give you like withdrawals where you're sick, you you know, like like uh, opioids, but it can disrupt your your living activities, schoolwork, it can like it can really destroy yeah. you. Like, it happens to people, right? You you get what's called a motivational um, a motivational syndrome. And basically that's stoners or weed heads. Mm -hmm. You don't do nothing, right? Just like sit you, you just sit that. around. Like you want to do some un in unfulfilled projects, school, work, relationships, kids, all that stuff, and that happens to people. So we used to joke around and call them people weed heads, and you know other people call them stoners. But mm -hmm. those are people who are having a cannabis use disorder. Right. It's affecting their ability to live a functional life the way that they want, the way that their friends and family, their circle is mm -hmm. like, yo, bro. You've been on that couch all day, all day. day right? Like, you know, they would come in like, ah, this dude don't do nothing bad. He's a weed head, right? right. So that happens. You don't have that risk with CBD because it doesn't give you that boost of, like, happiness, endorphins, the dopamine, that reward thing where you're like, I really felt good. Let me get that again. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a, a risk of that. Um, so it's been really interesting to be on the journey, right. uh, learn all this stuff, um, as you can, I love the medicine, like you, you know, the conversations that we've had, right? And you're internal medicine, so I didn't yeah. train in I have. That's why I call you, because I know you, you <laughs> can fill in gaps I don't have, right? So I love that. Um, I get cases, people come in asking crazy stuff. I'm like, damn, I read about this in a book, like one time, eight, 10, 20, like, I yeah, it was like one, it's like a half, yeah, a half what a part you, of a chapter. Yeah, it was, what it was, are you talking about, right? No. Wait a minute, I'll be like, let me look into it. I don't know, right? This might be something new. I might come up to you coming to me with this. I might come up with something new. We recently, give you a great example, we had a patient um, with lupus nephritis who had a uh, nephrectomy, 
Mm -hmm. So was working with her. She had to go get um, a transplant. And uh, so we're working with her um, nephrologist, her um, rheumatologist, immunologist, and all those people. It was crazy because they, she was bringing me the information and then I was sending the information back to her physicians. And I was like, I don't even know how someone with a, ne a nephrectomy and then, for, and then uh, a transplant reacts to, like, how does this work, right? Mm -hmm. like, I know it's metabolized by the liver, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But, like, I need to go research this, mm -hmm. right? Like, because here we are. With one kidney, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, exactly. And so there's been opportunities to do things that's just been like, I would never got an opportunity to be involved or to do this kind of medicine or to help people. Mm -hmm. Right, because there's not a lot of people that this woman could have gone to. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, like, and she was like, "I don't want to take my medicine." She was like, "I don't want to take those drugs that they're giving me. I want some natural." So she falls into the group. Like, mm -hmm. I don't. I'm a holistic person. Mm -hmm. Is there some way you can manage my pain and my anxiety, but my chronic pain, um, without opioids, without NSAIDs? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I want. Right, and I'm like, well. You don't even have a kidney. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's start. Let's start, yeah, let's start so there. there. All right. So before we start there, like I was saying, before we start there, let's go back. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's talk to your transplant doctor and see if, like, mm -hmm. if this is even something. And then I've gotten situations where the doctor, the consulting physician, will come back and be like, "I don't know. Like, we never did this in training. Yeah. Like, what do you think?" Right. <laughs> right. Come back. I'll be like, "Well." I was hoping, you yes. know. You That's happened a lot with being in this office. Like yeah. People come in here and ask me questions. They're like, they look on the registry like, oh, well, you registered to go ahead and, and prescribe? I'm like, yeah, to, 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 to uh, make the, make the, uh, the recommendations for, for, for medical marijuana. I say, yeah, but that's not what I do. Yeah. Like, I'm on the list, but my man <laughs> is Dr. Thomas. So yeah. that's where you're going to go. So 100% of my That's my true. People. You have. I have gotten a bunch of people. I appreciate that too because yeah. they do go like, hey, Dr. G sent me over. I'm like, all right. 100%, yeah. 100 going your way because that's, you know, that's not my expertise. So yeah. I, I want someone who I know is going to take good care of them, yeah. is going to give them you know, a, a good care and give them yeah. the truth about their situation, right? And so when I do send somebody over there, I'm not, I don't go over there with them. Mm -hmm. Could you give us an idea of what it's like to go through the process of getting, you know, getting, getting, pr getting the American marijuana card yeah. or getting approved for that yep. with you and your office? So in the state of Florida, we have, you have to have medical marijuana. As a matter of fact, it's on the ballot this year for recreational cannabis. It's on the ballot. So if you're interested and you believe that medical marijuana, marijuana should be legal, right? Mm -hmm. Go out and vote this November, have your voice heard. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, you need to get qualified by a physician. There are 12, there are 11 qualifying conditions, many of them neurological, so you're looking at like uh, ALS, which is Lou, Lou Gehrig's mm -hmm. disease, Parkinson's, um, MS is another one. I'm trying to think of some more of the neurodegenerative disease. You have a lot of autoimmune diseases like Crohn's disease. Um, ulcerative colitis falls into that category. Um, of course, you got the glaucoma, HIV, AIDS, mm -hmm. uh, terminal conditions, so any terminal condition. Um, so you've got those conditions. I, I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. So you got to qualify mm -hmm. with one of those conditions. Or as a physician, you can say whatever condition that the patient has is similar to one of the detailed qualifying conditions. So we'll look through your records. Mm -hmm. What's going on, blah, blah. Then you come to the office. You know, hopefully you would have sent us your medical records prior. If not, we'll get them, you know, we'll help you get them. Now everything's digital, so it's much, much yeah. easier, right? Um, and you get there and you do an intake like a, a, a regular physician's office, right? So you come in, you get like your basic vitals done, yada, 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 medical history, questionnaire, mood questionnaire, some DSM-5 forms that you're going to fill out. And then you have a conversation with me. Um, and now we talk about like... Why do you want to do this? My first thing is like, why are you here, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're in the weed doctor's office, yeah, right? Why? Yeah, mm -hmm. why? What brought you to this point that you're like, I need mm -hmm. to go get this, right? So we have those conversations, and it's like the history of cannabis consumption, uh, uh, any medications. So we do, uh, we do a good breakdown of, like, potential drug-drug interactions. So there are drug-drug, like, people don't know that um, prior to surgery. 
a couple of things that you should know. For example, if you're a smoker of cannabis, right, a regular consumer, cannabis has a tendency to increase uh, secretions. So intubation becomes more difficult. Cannabis is also a mild anticoagulant. So if you've got some sort of bleeding disorder or uh -huh. something like that, something that you need to tell your surgeons and the anesthesiologist. And if you smoke regularly, you probably want to abstain a couple of days before so that you can normalize. So it works on the extrinsic pathway. So, you know, these kind of things, right? Uh -huh. Drugs, what are you taking? Is this safe for you? Is this going to increase the effect of some drugs? Is it going to decrease, right? Because it's metabolized by your cytochrome P4A uh, uh -huh. and P25 pathways, right? So we're getting full medicine nerd on you oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> Good and nerdy. <laughs> yeah, right? And so we do that um, because I always say people don't come to my office. Like my, I'm not a gatekeeper for like, there's some people who just want to get weed, right? So mm -hmm. they run a, a an office like mine, which is like a card mill. You come in, give me a couple bucks, we sign off whatever, here you go, sayonara, mm -hmm. you know, go get your weed, right? Mm -hmm. For us, because again, from my background, that's not my mission. That's mm -hmm. not my purpose, mm -hmm. right? So my purpose, like my patients have a problem they're trying to solve, mm -hmm. right? Like you're here for a serious, if you come see me, you're here for serious business. If you look at our profile online or any other, we're not like recreational weed party, like, ah, oh, we're gonna get high, no. We did a research study, we did a two year research study of CBD, like the first one, CBD, quality of life and retired athletes, like we're on that level. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say we get these patients that have serious conditions, like they're coming in like, bro, yeah. you know, help me, help, out. Me. <laughs> help me out with this, right? And so from there, then I kind of, and I'm, I, I think I'm fortunate because my experience, you know, from my medical background and then the things. So after football ended for me, I was in uh, health and exercise science. Um, so I was a professor of health and exercise science at the College of New Jersey. So I taught physiology, kinesiology, exercise science, nutrition, all that stuff. Also taught for the American College of Sports Medicine and National Strength and Conditioning. So I was like, that was my thing mm -hmm. before I decided to become a physician. That gives me like a well-rounded kind of uh -huh. understanding of like how to deal with the patient. And then we talk about like options for treatment. Like what are you gonna do, right? There are things that take that you need to take into consideration. What your vocation is. What are you doing during the day, uh -huh. right? Like that's really important. Um, drug testing. That's uh -huh. another thing, right? So as much as you may want the the weed, right? I gotta let you know, bro. Like. If you're getting drug tested, I will always tell them, I don't think it's a good idea for yeah. you, right? Because you can't lose your job. I know it sucks. I yeah. know, right? I know they it can't sucks. Lose your job. I, yeah, man, but like I can't with a clear conscience because that's another problem. Now mm -hmm. you're, you came here to fix one problem. Yeah, you're yeah. second Huge. problem. Yeah, because you ain't got no money. You're mm -hmm. broke, right? And like, why you're broke, mate? The weed doctor gave me <laughs> weed. <laughs> Who's that? It was him. All right. right. So, you know, we talk about those type of things, and then we start um, kind of breaking down options of ways that they can treat themselves, right? Which is a good thing. I do like this about about this because it's still kind of like an art, so people can kind of tincture, uh, tincture, kind of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, tinker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Tincture is the oils they that drop. The oil. Yeah, right. So they can kind of tinker with their doses without worrying like you know so if you give somebody a prescription for a, for a narcotic you can't tinker with that because that's that's dangerous right so cannabis luckily you can't overdose mm -hmm. it doesn't cross the blood blood brain, blood brain barrier it doesn't cause respiratory depression right so it doesn't do a lot of those things that you'd be worried so somebody increase let's say you take too much cbd mm -hmm. the major side effect is you go to sleep that's it, mm -hmm. right? which is something that we use yeah. right, to treat people, right? You would have to take maybe four or five grams, like so 4,000, 5,000 milligrams before you start to get like GI disturbance. That's the second side effect, mm -hmm. right? So outside of that, and now we're saying four or five grams, normal treatment amount, 25, 30 milligrams. Right. Right? Much <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're nowhere near that, right? Same thing with THC. THC small doses, two and a half milligrams, five milligrams, 10 milligrams max. You know, those are the doses that you're mm -hmm. working with. And then we're talking about, okay, daytime use. Let's say it's chronic pain, right? So you can have neuropathic pain, 
right? You can have chronic pain from, you know, musculoskeletal type of stuff. THC is great for neuropathic pain because that because it decreases the signal intensity and your brain's perception of that pain signal, right? So okay. you the pain signal comes, hits your brain, and you're like, hmm, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, Maybe guess. A little bit. yeah I guess it hurts, you know, right? Uh, but it also decreases the intensity of that signal coming from the source, right? Okay. The cannabinoids also work on your opioid, delta and mu receptors, right? Which are really big, strong pain receptors, right? Also works with uh, inhibition of release of substance P, right? Substance P at the cellular level is responsible for a lot of the pain signal. Mm -hmm. So when you get into it, you're like, like this stuff, you know, you come looking at the research and you're like, okay, bro, this is what you need. You think you need to smoke weed all day. Mm -hmm. You don't, right? Take some CBD, it'll bring the inflammation down. Add some topical um, products there. It'll give you some local relief. You don't have to worry about transdermal absorption unless we have a carrier molecule. So we go through that and then we give them choices. Usually it takes most patients about three to four weeks of kind of like, all right, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And they'll come back and be like, I'm good. Like you follow up. Sometimes mm -hmm. we'll have a follow up call in like a month. What's up? How's things going? They're like, Everything is great. Like, yeah. I'm sleeping. My body doesn't hurt. My mood. I'll tell you one of the best things, honestly. Like I said, when they come into my office, it's not good. Like, you're not coming to me because everything's great. You're coming to me because it's like, I'm finished. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> you're like, I heard somewhere that the weed could help uh -huh. me out. Is that right? Right? So when they come in, like, the mood is depressed. Like, life is hard right. at that point. Right? Just imagine, right? You're, you're seriously sick. Real talk. You're seriously sick and you've gotten to the point where you're like, I need to go see the weed doctor. Yeah, you never right? have weed in your life. You never <laughs> yeah, tried right, it like, I'm good. like, this is the idea that popped in you and you're like, yeah, I'm out of options. Right. This is the thing. So by the time they get to me, they're like finished. Then you see them months later. Totally and different person. Totally different. Mm -hmm. The eyes are bright. Like they're living a, heavy, a healthier lifestyle. Like, man, I couldn't, I couldn't barely walk before. Right? Of course mm -hmm. I wasn't exercising, right? And it's now like they're dressing, they're happy, having sex. Like you talk to a lot, a lot of our female patients, a lot of our women patients. Um, they have uh, suffering from um, sexual arousal disorder. Like, mm -hmm. Just not, I don't want to do it, right? Right. So, right that's A, like I literally don't want to mm -hmm. do this, right? But secondly, if I do it, it's not enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It hurts, this kind of stuff. And so, you know, sex is a really important part of everyone's life. Mental health, physical health, emotional health, right? So mm -hmm. you have this big part of your life that's been removed because of all these other things, whether it's anxiety, stress, pain. And then now it's like, I'm not even being intimate. What do you think that's going to do for your relationship? Yeah, relationship's going to yeah right. So now, like, just think about that as the problems are piling up, and it's like, yo, bro, can you get me some weed? Yeah, just give me some weed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll try anything. I'm finished. <laughs> yeah, at this point, I'll try anything. And then slowly but surely, they start feeling better. And I think a big, uh, a big contributor of that too, is um, feeling in control. So like when I say to them, here are the options, and you're going to find out what's worth it. They like that. It's empowerment, right? Because mm -hmm. they feel like, well, I've been other places. They give me the pills, and yep. like I'm stuck now, right? I got to call back if I want to decrease. Like you know, I feel terrible, and so I think patients really enjoy that ability to kind of say, yeah, you know, this is what works for me. Be, yeah, yeah, I'm in control of my body. You know, nobody's dictating to me because it hasn't worked for me. So, you know, I'm really happy about that. As you can tell, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm pumped up about it. You I know? love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. So, what do you think is what do you think is the next thing for for medical marijuana and CBD All right, in the so, medical space? Yeah. So, I would say nationwide, it's a big um, political topic, right? So, we've got a lot of you know layers to it in terms of how it's disproportionately affected our communities, African American or people of African descent. You know, we're Haitian American. Sometimes I'm like, man, am I African American? Mm -hmm. I was born in mm -hmm. Haiti, but I grew up here. Mm -hmm. I spent more years there. Yeah, like I might. I don't know when I'm checking the boxes off, mm -hmm. right? And so people of uh, you know African descent, you know, it's disproportionately harmed us. The prohibition policies, right? Um, and so there, there's been kind of like a long-standing effect of that that hasn't gone away because as a result of the incarceration, right, 
we are least likely to participate in the industry in many levels. So it's patience because of the stigma, right? So there's uh -huh. generations of us who are like, you know what happens when you mess with that weed, right? Uh -huh. You get in trouble and you get sent away, uh -huh. right? So there's generations of us who have a stigma to, to it, right? So as this industry blows up in the US, right? We're not participating on both the patient side uh -huh. in the same numbers as our Caucasian counterparts, counterparts and in the industry side, right? And there's, you know, a number of reasons for that. And so there have been a lot of efforts to kind of like improve or increase minority uh, participation in the space. It's a great economic advantage to our community. So there's research that has shown when you open a dispensary in a neighborhood, actually increases pop property value, tax revenue increases, crime decreases, right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the dispensaries actually lift up the other businesses around, right? You have people traveling there, and those people have money because uh -huh. this is a cash. Your insurance is not paying for it, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So the cannabis business is a business for people who have money, right? Because this stuff is not cheap, uh -huh. which is another thing, you know, which disproportionately affects us is the cost the of cost. entry. You got to pay to see the doctor. We we cost two. We charge two hundred and ten dollars, right? So that's their cost. Then you got to pay the state for the license. 75 bucks, uh -huh. right? So you're in already 285 and you haven't even bought yeah. anything yet. Uh -huh. Then you got to go to the dispensary and buy the weed, right? Uh -huh. And so there are some people, that's a barrier. Um, and so moving forward, I think if we do legalize, we'll decrease one of the cost barriers, which will improve access to people who don't have the monetary resources to do that, right? The bad thing again for you know, people in these kind of disadvantaged communities is there's no dispensaries in your neighborhood. Right. You don't have access to this. So let's say you do want, and you feel in your heart, like cannabis is the thing that's going to help you out. You got to buy it from your plug, from your right. connect, right? Now you're not legal. You're exposing yourself to criminal justice, police, violence, right? Because you got buy, you buy from a drug dealer, you're right? Crime, you never know. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. So you're involved in a whole bunch of stuff, which is detrimental to your long-term health. It is. Right. So um, there's tainted weed out there, a lot of things. So if we can get this recreational, we can, you know, let's not say recreation, the, the, the official term is adult use. Adult use. Okay. Adult use, then we'll have decreased the barrier, but with that come some other problems, right? So, you know, a lot of people, I believe, I'll, I'll always have a practice because... I don't, I'm not the gatekeeper, right? So I will always have the cancer patients. I will always have, mm -hmm. you know, the palliative care, hospice patients, you know, or people who are, I will always have, you know, the, those, those unicorn patients, you know, who are like, yeah, I need an expert on this, right? But your day-to-day -day person who's kind of like, yeah, I just want to take the anxiety off, you know, mm -hmm. the stress off, they're going to be out on their own. Um, and the proliferation of that, we can't act like it's all fun and games because like we mentioned, there are drug drug interactions, there right? There it are things the like stuff. yeah, right. There are, and so this unlimited kind of like it, it could be a, a Pandora's box. So we've noticed since the the studies have data has shown since they've had uh, medical marijuana in the state of Florida, emergency room admissions secondary to THC intoxication have increased a lot. So basically, people have been going and getting super high off of like edibles and stuff because the stuff from the dispensary is potent. It's not like the cheap, you know, everything, like you go to a smoke shop, a gas station, you get that cheap bootleg weed, you're like, Ooh. oh, the stuff from the dispensary, this is like heavy duty, real good, you know, near pharmaceutical grade stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So you're messing around with it thinking it's the same as like the fuddy-duddy stuff that you've been getting from whatever, it's and totally it ain't different. safe. So when the stuff from the dispensary says this is 10 milligrams a piece, that is 10 milligrams mm -hmm. a piece. You buy something from some dude at some like, you know, farmer's market or some smoke shop and it says, oh, there's 500 milligrams per piece in here. And you're like, oh yeah, I've been buying this stuff. It said it was five, you know, 10 milligrams is not gonna do nothing. Yeah, man, that's cause like the, that other stuff is not real, yeah. right? And so you've been having a lot of admissions. Now, fortunately, no deaths. So there are no THC induced deaths, okay. right? So, THC won't kill you, right? But it can do a lot of things to you. 
If you got a history of mental health disorders, all right, so it can trigger psychotic episodes. So mm -hmm. if you have a history of psychosis, it can do that, right? So it's not gonna make you psychotic mm -hmm. if you've never done that mm -hmm. before. But if you have a history, it can do that. You have a history of arrhythmias, it can trigger an arrhythmia. There are a bunch of cannabinoid receptors mm -hmm. in cardiac muscle, right? So when people say, oh man, I got, a bad, I got high and I felt like my heart beating, right? So it's not just in your mind, that's actually happened. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a history of arrhythmias, it can trigger an arrhythmia because of that. So, you know, there's that, there's paranoia, Obviously, um, so, you know, people with PTSD, for example, that's one of the conditions. But realistically, for people with PTSD, I'm always on the CBD side. Like, mm -hmm. we really don't, we got to do a risk-reward thing, right? So if you're having intrusive thoughts, nightmares, recurrent yeah, memories, you... disassociation, you know, disassociative episodes and those type of things, why would I give you a substance that puts you at risk of mm -hmm. having, like, though, and then when that happens... Like you're stuck, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So um, there are some risks as it opens up. So hopefully, you know, as it opens up, there will still be a great kind of emphasis on the education, which is what I try to do. Um, you know, because we're all trying to get healthier. We're looking for solid sources that can help us get, you know, healthier in our lives, live, live better, higher quality lives, right? And kind of like, you know, live the life that we want. How can we do that? So. I like to contribute to it, you know, I like to, mm. in my way, in the industry that I'm in, um, but understanding that it ain't like, it's not all roses right. and I, you know, unicorns right. and puppy, it, it's not so funny, like I smoke the weed, it'll cure, you know, your ingrown toy today, it's not gonna do that, you know, mm. people come through all the time, oh, I got this, get the, no. First yeah, thing I'll tell them, nah, man, that's not what it's for. I hate to tell you this, <laughs> right? I know you were hoping I would say <laughs> this, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. No, that's yeah. not the case. People have unrealistic expectations. Yeah. So I mean, I, I love I love speaking to you because every time I, we talk, I learn something new about right. you know the marijuana industry, the CBD, and how it works. Um, how could people get in touch with you if they you know obviously I will send them to you? Yeah, you I'm do say that. Otherwise, up. otherwise my kids at the thank video. you for saying. <laughs> <laughs> but keeping the lights on. <laughs> but otherwise, how, how could how, how could the people get in touch with you if they wanted to get in touch with you and, and learn some more or maybe get their own mar medical marijuana? Card? Yep. So you can always hit us up um, on the website. It's drdoms.com. It's d r d a m a s dot com, mm. or you can spell it out doctor d o c t r. Whichever one will take you to the website. Mm. On that site, we have tons. So. I like to teach. I used to be a professor before, mm -hmm. so I like to share the knowledge because every time I learn something, I'm like, damn, you know, this okay. is, I should tell people, cool. yeah, this is interesting. I should tell people about this. So we have like a knowledge section that's like full of articles and, and stuff. I, I do the research myself, so everything's vetted through me. There's always links to the sources, so if you're like kind of geeky about the medicine, mm -hmm. and then you can always click and then find the sources from there, so there's tons of information on there. We have our products. We do our own CBD products. Mm -hmm. um, we try to tailor products to what our patients ask for. So, like I said, so that's why we do a lot of the CBD stuff. That's what people really want. Bro, man, like, I got a headache. I don't want to be high. I just want my headache yeah. gone, right? Like, is there something that will take my headache away, but I'm not high because I got to teach these middle schoolers all day? Right. Yes, I could hook you up, you know? Hey, my feet hurt. My back hurts. I'm coaching a sport. Is this something that will take the edge off of this, right? Not ruin my kidneys or give me ulcers, mm -hmm. right? But like I can be out on the field. Yes, I, you know, I can do that. I'm a mom, I got a baby, you know, I'm overwhelmed by the stress of it, but I gotta take care of my baby. I can't be, you know, the baby's completely mm -hmm. dependent mm -hmm. upon me, right? But I got issues. My feet have been killing me ever since birth or whatever. You know, is there, hell, we have patients that come in that are pregnant that are asking, like, mm. can I use cannabis during pregnancy, mm. right? So that's a, you know, because they were using it prior. Mm -hmm. Now you're pregnant. Things have changed, right. <laughs> right? And so there's a lot of, you know, things about that. So drdoms.com, always call the office, 833-362-3262, 833-362-3262. And follow us on social media, Dr. Domus CBD, real easy. Put a lot of educational content. We don't do as much of the funny stuff, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the funny guy, right? <laughs> but, you know, we give people the information that they're looking for so they feel confident about the decisions that they're making, confident about the health care. We refer people, like, right. out, right? So that's the other thing. That's really important for me. I mean, honestly, like, that's, like, a big part for me. Like, 
nah, man, I, I can't just give you the weed like that. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's not yeah, like, a of, yeah, a right? Like, like, yo, you got to go get yourself checked out. You got to heal, like, you know, this is not going to turn out well for you, right. right? If you do it the way that you're thinking. So how can I help you moving forward? So, I, I, you know, I love being in the space. Um, we are growing, like, you know, say we're growing. We do a lot of media stuff, man. And so I look back at that decision. With the radiology. I think you made the right decision, brother. I think you made the right decision. You right? see me in the reading room, <laughs> in a dark room know, with my right? screen, right? Like losing my pigment, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. So, yeah, thinking about it, I made the right decision. Uh, it wasn't an easy one, but I'm super happy with you know, what I've done. I mean, it's the reason you and I have a relationship, right? Think right. about it, right? Cause, or else you'd be like, hey, dog, I got to... I got an MRI. <laughs> can you can you look not at this? As, not, as, not, as, <laughs> not, as, not as much value in that, man. Yeah, a lot no, of people doing that. Not many people doing what you're doing right now. <laughs> exactly. One last question before we yeah. go. Um, is the question I ask everybody on the show. Okay. All right, ten years after this is all, you're all said and done, and, and you know it, it's it's time to go meet our maker, and and we're, and we're out of here. Uh, what would you like the people to think or to say about your business, and where would you like your business to be ten years after you're gone? Ten years after I'm gone, um, so I've thought about this, actually. Um, this is my entryway into a larger kind of um, paradigm shift in how people perceive medicine, the delivery of medicine, and um, the kind of understanding or the interaction between what you would consider allopathic or Western medicine and traditional or holistic Ayurvedic, right? Mm -hmm. There's some people who say, well, you know, there's no value in this and there's no value in that. There are no absolutes in that, right? So there's value in both. Mm -hmm. How can you combine that? Which is, you know, from my, my history as an athlete, exercise science, and now in medicine and this cannabis. So combining that kind of, kind of stuff. And we've talked about some of this stuff in the, in, in the background. So, you know, the, the CBD and the, and the cannabis are part of that, um, but so is overall mental health, wellness, mm -hmm. exercise, nutrition, um, and being able to be a source to provide that. So people looking at that company that I've built 10 years after I'm gone and saying, that's the company I trust. <laughs> like right. Right. this, like if you're gonna get something, information or product, like that's where you go for it, right? right? And that is my, you know, that's my goal right now in the cannabis space. Um, is there, the way that the legislation is right now? There's a hodgepodge, a mishmash of different entities, different state regulations. Mm -hmm. There's no brand in cannabis that you say like, yeah. You're right. Like there's there's yeah. no Coca Cola. There's no Kleenex. There's no like. McDonald's, right. there's not that brand that you say to yourself, yeah, man, grandpa's knees is hurting him. I want to get a cream for it. Who am I going to get it for, right? Yeah, like, right, right. Or, you know, whomever, like, you know, I've got a headache, like I mentioned earlier, or whatever. Like, who are you going to get? In, in cannabis space, there isn't that name. Right. There are a lot of celebrities who are leveraging their name, you know, in the recreational side, like, let's get high, let's smoke, let's do that. But when we're talking about the nitty gritty, mm -hmm. about like what's in your medicine cabinet, mm -hmm. I want that. I want to be in your medicine cabinet. I want to be in your nightstand. I want to be in your gym bag. I want to mm -hmm. be in your luggage. Like I want your go-to. If you're about that life, I want to be the person that provides that for you. I want to be in your shower. Like if there's a way for us, I, I want that. Because that's how it used to be. That's actually how it used to be. Cannabis was like... You know, in people's medicine cabinet, it was completely legal. It, it was actually a preferred choice mm -hmm. above aspirin and acetaminophen and all and the opioids. It was that. And then it was, you know, prohibition mm -hmm. that kicked it out. So I want to be the brand that does that, you know. So there you go. I love Let's it. speak it into existence. Let's <laughs> do it. Let's do it. <laughs> well, that's all we have for today for the Healthy Exchange with Dr. G. As you can see, this guy is uh, lit on, he's on fire for her. <laughs> for uh, CBD and, and, and he loves what he does. And that's, these are the type of people that we love to connect with and to connect to you. So to the next time, see you soon.